Arsenal 2, Luton 0. Professional performance. Professional performance today, Karamba. I think the first half was a lot better than the second half. But look at the new All I care is about the three points. When it started, 10 games to go to win the league. All I said is I want the points. That's all I care about. I don't care anymore about the performances. Just get the points. And today, we did what we needed to do. We didn't know how the game would go against Man City versus Aston Villa. But we had to get our job done. Liverpool are due to play their next game. We had to mount the pressure back onto City and back onto Liverpool by getting our job done. And that's what we've done today. So listen, I'm happy today. I'm happy. I'm happy today. And this is exactly what I wanted. A professional performance. A performance that we come out with the three points. And that's all I care about. And today, listen, second half, I'm not going to lie. If I say sincero, it was a ball fest. The second half was absolutely rubbish. I don't care. We nullified Luton. They didn't have any chances. They didn't create anything. They didn't do anything. So guess what? Finish that puta. I don't care. Eu não quero saber bro. I prefer to be bored and pick up three points than to be going out there, you know, allowing the opposition to, to flip in, make 100 flipping shots on target, and then we leave without the points. The points right now is what counts. The points right now is the main thing. Getting over the line. And listen, our defensive record still shows. Even when we're making rotation, even when we're bringing Zinchenko into the defence, we're still performing defensively. Still performing defensively. Starting with the front three, I think Trossard today was absolutely sourcing today. Putting it through defenders' legs, his runs on the left-hand side, they couldn't live with him. And this is what I want to see. This is what I want to see from Trossard. Chosadinho, é isso que eu quero ver, filhos da puta. Toma, hold that. You know what I'm saying? We had to get the job done. People are going to say, oh, yeah, but you expected to win the game. You still got to win. You still got to go out there and perform. You still got to go out there and nullify Luton to nothing. A Luton team that scored, what, three against us in the last time we played Luton. Yeah? Four, three. This was very different to the way that we played Luton the first time we came across them this season, where it was 4-3, Ben White with the with the last winner. We absolutely closed down anything that they tried to do. They couldn't mount any attacks. They couldn't get any shots off on target. And this is what I want to see. And I think Trossard was excellent. Absolutely fantastic. I think Trossard was great going forward. But not only was he great going forward, I think he was great at covering that left back also for Zinchenko, who I'm going to get onto as well. I am going to get on to Zinchenko. But when we're talking about Trossard, I think going forward, he was offering a lot, making great runs, good passes in the box. He gave ESR a lot of good chances in the box that maybe ESR should have taken. ESR should have scored. But it is what it is. ESR doesn't make the most out of those chances to, to get himself a goal. But ultimately, it is what it is, man. I'm not going to ponder too much on that. But I think Trossard performed very, very well. I think he was un. Unfortunate for Trossard. I'm going to keep it real. Unfortunate for Trossard not to get an assist today because he gave it on the plate numerous times to ESR. I think Trossard deserved to be, um, to get to get a, a, at least an assist today. At least one assist today with everything he was providing on the left-hand side. So, big up to Trossard, man. Big up to Trossard. Great performance from Trossard. Havertz on the meantime, not that great. I think Havertz, the only good thing I remember Havertz doing is that assist into Odegaard. Um, which he took very, very well. Other than that, I didn't really see much to do with Havertz. I don't, I didn't see him really getting many shots off. I didn't really see him working the goalkeeper. Didn't really see much from Havertz today. A bit more of a quiet day for Havertz. I'm gonna keep it real. Yeah, not. It wasn't an amazing performance from Havertz. It wasn't a dreadful performance from Havertz. It was a bit of a meh. There was times where he got barged off off the ball by the defender, but he kept going. He tried to link up play. He wasn't terrible. He wasn't amazing. It was kind of a mere performance from, from Havertz today. But it is what it is. We still got the three points and ultimately it's kind of irrelevant because we did what we needed to do and get and we got the three points. Trossard, great game. I think Havertz a bit of a mere game. I think Reese Nelson as well wasn't amazing today. Wasn't incredible. You know, a bit unlucky to not get in the score sheet. I think it went down as an own goal by one of the, one of the uh, Luton defenders. Um for when ESR crossed it into Reese Nelson. It looked at first like Reese Nelson tapped it in, but then we see that it came off of the defender. So it's the defender's goal, but still he was in the right place at the right time. Just the defender got to it. It is what it is. It is what it is. I'm not going to get on to Reese Nelson too much. You guys already know what I feel about Reese Nelson. Do I rate him? No, but 
he did what he needed to do today. So I'm not going to get on to him too much. Today, I'm not going to get on to too many players, man. I'm, I'm really not. Ultimately, it's about the three points. And this is all I care about. We're going top back to top of the league. That is all I care about today. I don't care about, you know, just dragging players and, 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 and about performances right now. Just get me the three points. Just get me. If we drop stinker after stinker to the end of the season and we win, we win every single game, you won't see me complaining, bro. You will not see me complaining. Just get the three points. Just win. Now it's just about winning. It's just about going forward. Yeah. And putting the pressure back onto uh, the other two that are in this three horse title race. So that's what I want to see. I'm be, I'm going to be completely honest. That is what I want to see, Caramba. But Reese Nelson, like I said, I didn't see much from Reese Nelson. Wasn't a great performance. A bit like Havertz, a bit of a mere performance for me from Reese Nelson. Wasn't amazing. He tried, he ran around a little bit, but he, he wasn't clinical in front of goal. I don't think he was amazing. A little bit unfortunate not to, not to get a goal. It is what it is. It is what it is. ESR. Now, I think ESR actually had a decent game. But there was things about ESR's game today that was a little bit frustrating. Now, I'm not going to rip him. I'm not going to start calling him names. I'm not going to start grilling him and, and finishing him. It's just not, it's not, it's not one of them. It's not one of them. Yeah, we've got the three points. I don't think ESR had a, a poor game. I think he could have had a better game. Two chances ESR gave, uh, sorry, Trossard gave ESR in the box. One of them, he miscontrols it. Come on, you've got to control that ESR. Maybe he's a bit rusty. He hasn't had a lot of game time. He hasn't had, he hasn't been in the team a lot. Maybe he's just a little bit rusty. I can understand that. I expected a little bit better from ESR, especially with the numerous amounts of chances that Trossard was given to ESR in the first half. I think the first 25, 30 minutes was absolutely dominating Luton in that first half. And there was another chance that Trossard gave to ESR and he hits it straight at the flip in the defenders. I want you to do a little bit better. You need to do a little bit better. Work the goalkeeper. We need a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Instead of smacking it straight into the defenders, you could have taken a second touch and whip it around the defenders or, or make the goalkeeper work for it. It's a little bit frustrating seeing that from ESR because he did do some, some good things. He did look energetic. He was putting himself around. He was making good runs. He did, well, he didn't get the assist for Reese Nelson, but he would have got the, the assist for Reese Nelson. Ultimately, he created that own goal um, for our second goal. So Smith Rowe did do well. He did create chances. He did do things. But... It wasn't amazing. And like I said, I'm, 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 I may just be putting it down to ESR. He hasn't had a run of games. He's a bit rusty. I still don't think he's the level that we need, but at least he's coming on and offering something. You know, when we're rotating players like Jorginho, we're rotating players um, that play in that position. At least he's coming on and bringing something to the team. So I'll give him, I will give ESR props where props is due. You got the assist. You did do, you, you, were create, you were creative, you were running around, you were making good runs. So ESR, I think he had a decent game. Not, a well, not an amazing game, I think he had a decent game. I think if he would have taken those two chances that Chossard gave to him, he could have been up there for man of the match. An assist and a goal definitely would have been man of the match for me in this game. But he didn't take those opportunities. It is what it is. I think Thomas Partey today, coming back from injury, it... it it looked comfortable, very comfortable for, for Thomas Partey. Um, I think it was a game that didn't really exploit or didn't really look like Thomas Partey's been out for the amount of time he's been out. He looks very comfortable. I think this was the perfect game for Marteta to bring Partey in. You know, a looting team that's not going to be physical. You don't need a player that's just come back from injury, getting into a very physical game and, and that kind of thing, and maybe get another reoccurring injury. I think it was a good run out for Thomas Partey. And... Um, didn't really see him put, put a foot wrong. I can't lie. I didn't really see him put a foot wrong. So, don't my ease off the edge that merda that always say that I'm toxic and negative. Yeah, if I do my nuku, I'm praising, yeah, the majority of the team so far. So, let's keep going. Odegaard, yeah. Odegaard today, I think he took that goal. That's exactly what I want to see going forward from Odegaard. You receive the ball in the box, just smash it first time. He hit it first time. The goalkeeper didn't even have a chance to reposition himself. Smashed it, top, top bottom corner, and there you go. You know what I'm saying? Bottom corner, slotted it in first time. That's what I want to see from Odegaard. Not the Odegaard that takes 20 touches in the box, allows defenders to set on him and block his shot and get around him. And all of a sudden, he's got three players around him. He took it first time. Great goal from Odegaard. Like the way he took that. And going forward, I think he was not just the goal. In everything that we're doing well in the first half, he was instrumental. He was dribbling with the ball, traveling with the ball, 
allowing Fred and through Reese Nelson, Fred and through um, Trossard, I think he was effective to the way that we were attacking um, and the way we, that we were playing in the first half. So I think Odegaard had a very, very good game. The way he was pressing as well, I think Odegaard had a very, very good game today. For me, my man of the match, Martin Odegaard today. I think he was excellent today, Odegaard. I think he done very, very well. Very, very well. You know what I'm saying? Odegaard also, he had a pass in the box to ESR. He almost set up ESR. And ESR shoots, but it, it, it goes it goes roughly right at the goalkeeper. So he's kind of he's kind of unlucky, Odegaard. He could have got a goal and an assist, but he still makes it for me as my man of the match. Like I said, this is why Smith Rowe doesn't get my man of the match today. I think Trossard gave him two opportunities on the plate. Odegaard gave him a chance on the plate and he didn't take it. He didn't take those opportunities. Otherwise, ESR would have been my man of the match today. But Odegaard did very, very well. Like I said, get, you know, taking his goal very well, giving Smith Rowe a chance in the box that was probably harder to miss than to score. But it is what it is, man. I think Odegaard performed very, very well today. And big up to Odegaard, my man of the match. Ben White. This guy has been solid this season. And look at some of the bro. And I think a lot of times he doesn't get the respect here yeah, that he deserves because he's not flashy. Bro, I will take a competent, a, a proper defensive right back than a flashy one, bro. Like this guy, every single time teams want to come at us, they will always target the left hand side if Zinchenko's there. Even when you bring on Kivio, they never target Ben White. And that is to, that is a credit to Ben White. The fact that he's always solid on that right-hand side. He's always solid, bro. Always solid. You know what I'm saying? Even going forward, whipping in crosses. When he's back, he never forgets his defensive duty. That's one thing I like about Ben White. Even when he goes forward, he never forgets his defensive duties. The guy is always solid at the back. We talk a lot about the solidity between Gabriel and Saliba. Bro, Ben White has been solid. I can't remember the last time Ben White's been cooked. I can't remember the last time I said Ben White's out of position. I can't remember the last time I said Ben White's got forward and didn't drop back. Bro, Ben White has been... Very, very good for Arsenal this season. And he deserves his props. And not a lot of people talk about it. But you know what? When you're, a, when you're a defender, not a lot of people are talking about you. That's for good reason. You're doing your job and you're not making mistakes. A lot of times when you're talking too much about a defender, it's because they're making mistakes. Big up to Ben White. I think he performed excellently again today. Solid at the back. And that's exactly what I want to keep seeing from Ben White. And I think he chooses his moments. And I think that's one thing that I like about Ben White. He chooses his moments to go forward. He won't just bombard forward and run into traffic. He picks his time to go forward. So big up to Ben White. And not a lot of people, every time Saliba Gabriel. Saliba, and yes, Saliba Gabriel have been excellent. Give Ben White some props, man. The guy has been solid. Let's keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Starting of 2024, this guy has been solid, man. So big up to my dropper because I remember when I used to I used to be grilling this guy. But listen, he's been listening to Northside LDN. You know what I'm saying? Damzaki, familia. Damzaki. So this is what I'm talking about, man. He deserves props. And it's about time that I mention him and more people start mentioning Ben White because he's part of that back line that's been solid. Gabriel and Saliba, I think, have been excellent. Once again, solid. Didn't have much to, to do, really. I think Thomas Partey shielded them pretty well. The team as a whole defended really well. Didn't have much to do. And they're just solid, man. Anytime, you know, anyone gets through, they'll just sweep it up nicely. I do want to give an extra shout-out to Gabriel. And the reason I wanted to give an extra shout-out to Gabriel is because every single time that Filuda Puta Zinchenko plays, Gabriel has to do the job of two. And that's a fact. And now... And I know some people, oh, you're going to be moaning. I say how I, feel, how I feel and how I see it. Zinchenko is a liability. Today, you did not, you have not given this manager a headache, nor reason to ponder playing you over Kivio. Kivio gets in. Against better opposition, we're playing Kivio. You are a liability. Against a Luton team that is there for the taking, a Luton team that we should be comfortably slapping up, which we did, yeah? You were making it more of an open game than it needed to be. I'm sick and tired of this guy, bro. I'm sick and tired, bro, of this Zap, bro. What are you doing, Zinchenko, bro? Man is going to the ball. Instead of kicking it out if he's in doubt, doesn't see that there's a winger behind him that's pressing him, the Luton player, points to the ball for Gabriel to clear it up. Filodaputa, why don't you clear it up? Why don't you clear it up? The, you're the one in control of the ball, but you're leaving it to Gabriel and you're getting pressed from the back. Man doesn't even turn around to see if he's being pressed. 
Come on, the naivety. This guy does the same old mistakes week in, week out when he's selected. This is why I don't want Zinchenko. There is no shock and there's no surprise that we've only gone with this defensive record since Zinchenko was not in that back line. This guy, this Filo da Puta is not good enough. He's not good enough, bro. I don't need the Ukrainian M&M, bro, at left back. I need somebody that can actually defend, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? I need someone that can actually defend. I don't need Eminem. I don't need Marshall Mathers, the Ukrainian Marshall Mathers at left back, bro. Actually defend so Filo da Puta. I'm done with this guy. And then when this Filo da Puta, Zinchenko wants to invert. That Filo da Puta is inverting and then giving it away to a ghost. Giving it away to a ghost. What are you doing, bro? What are you? What are you? I don't understand it. I know we're rotating. And I'm not going to, listen, at the end of the day, we already know Zinchenko is a liability. The, the argument is done. Zinchenko is the only player today that I can get onto and say, you dropped an absolute stinker once again. You have been, been displaced out of this team by Kivio, and this is the Bukaria performance that you put in. Luckily, it didn't cost us. Luckily, it didn't cost us. But this guy is a fraud, man. This guy is a fraud. Do you know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm not, I'm not hearing it. I'm not hearing it, bro. Like, what is this guy doing? You're inverting and you're passing to nobody. So you're not bringing anything to the midfield because you're misplacing passes. Then defensively, you're asking Gabriel to sweep up for you. It's a, bro, it's a joke. What are you there doing at left back? Now, I understand that he's a midfielder and the manager's playing him as a left back. Ateta, just... Stop playing this guy as a left back, bro. We don't need to relive Granite Xhaka. We don't need to. We don't need to keep asking something for other player that they're unable to do, bro. This Zinchenko is unable to defend. Just like Xhaka was unable to defend. Stop asking him to defend. If you're going to use him, use him as a midfielder. Stop using him as a left back. Now, obviously, we're not going to ponder in it too, too much because we still won. But still, bro. I don't need to keep seeing this every single time. Can we not play somebody else as a left back? Do we have to go with Zinchenko? I, I, I really don't get it. Rhea had a great game. You know what I'm saying? Rhea had a great game. Big up to Rhea once again. Um, but listen, it, it is what it is, man. It's just annoying because it's like, bro, the experiment has failed in using Zinchenko as a left back. Can we just move on? Can we actually move on? I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Because every time I see Zinchenko playing left back, my guy looks like Josh from My Parents Are Aliens, bro. I don't need that. I don't need it. So let's move on. You know what I'm saying? Gabriel played well. Then when you're looking at when you're looking at substitutions, obviously in Ketia, what can I say about in Ketia? This is exactly why I just don't rate in Ketia, bro. In Ketia comes on, can't control the ball, can barely get a shot off on target. But it is what it is, man. I'm not going to over ponder on it. We already know Inketia needs to be in that bunch of players that need to leave. I'm sorry. There's too many players that need to leave. They're not good enough. Not good enough. Zinchenko needs to leave. Reese Nelson needs to leave. Inketia needs to leave. Yeah. And every time they're getting these chances, they're not taking it. They're not giving us reason to say, you know what? Reese Nelson, he played an excellent game. Or Zinchenko played an excellent game. Do you know what? He should be pushing for a starting place in our next game. He's not, bro. He's not. You know what I'm saying? And that, and that, is, the, and that is the problem. That is the problem. Obviously, to Declan Rice comes on. You already know what Declan Rice does when he comes on. Tommy Yasu, look at the difference. And this is why I highlight Zinchenko. Look at the difference, yeah, in how much more calm we are in defence when Tommy Yasu comes in in the left-hand side in, 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 in contrary to somebody like Zinchenko. Look at the difference, Kadamba. Look at the difference. Do you know what I'm saying? This is what I mean. Tommy Asu comes on, bro. A player that can go forward, but also doesn't forget his defensive duties. Is solid. Yeah? He's good on one-on-ones. Yeah? Isn't going to be, isn't going to be beaten by the right back on, on a 1v1. Do you know what I'm saying? A solid, actual defender, bro. Not Josh from My Parents Are Aliens or the flipping Ukrainian Eminem. You know what I'm saying? The Ukrainian Slim Shady. Do you know what I'm saying? Can the real Zinchenko please stand up? What's going on? For this? Nah, it's not good enough, man. Eddie and Ketia, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with Jay Haas, bro. I'm done with Jay Haas. This guy, bro, he's not good enough. He's not good enough. I, I, that, that is it. The conversation on it is done now. Do you know what I'm saying? 
Every time I see Eddie coming on, bro, this guy looks like, bro, I'm, I'm done with this guy now. I am done with this guy, bro. Man, my guy looks like the black guy from S Club 7, bro. Man died off. Man got killed off. Man is done. His career is done. Eddie Nketiah looks like the black guy from S Club 7, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? You are done. You are finished, bro. You are finished. You know what I'm saying? This Nigerian Cisco. I'm done with him, bro. What does Nketiah bring? His link-up play isn't amazing. His goal scoring isn't amazing. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. What does Nketiah actually bring to us? I don't know. But it is what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? It's calm. Because, you know, he's part of Project Youth. And, 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 you know what I'm saying? It is what it is, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Every single time I look at Eddie Nketiah, man looks like Milo from the Tweenies, bro. Milo from the Tweenies. That's what we've got, yeah, as an attacking option. Nketiah Milo from the Tweenies, bro. Coming on. Ah, bro. Nah, allow me, allow me, allow me, allow me, allow me. And the thing is, I wasn't going to cuss certain players. I'm keeping it chilled. Before they start calling you, you're toxic and negative. You're being toxic and negative. Toxic and negative. You're being toxic. I'm not even getting angry. I'm actually just chilling. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually chilling. So I ain't even getting angry, innit? It's not my fault that we've got flipping Eddie and Ketya coming off the bench, yeah, for us to affect the game. Looking like the Nigerian Mo Farah. That's not my fault. That is not my fault. Do you know what I mean? The Nigerian Flash. That's what he is, bro. The Nigerian Flash, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm done with it. I'm done with Nketiah, bro. Is he Nigerian or is he Ghanaian? I don't even... I can't even remember, bro. I don't even know. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Jorginho came on, done his thing. Martinelli came on and looked lively, done his thing. Was running around, doing his thing. And, um, yeah. It is what it is, man. Professional. Listen, the, the second half was Uma Pukari. I can't even lie. It was so boring. Scrappy. We couldn't hold on to the ball. We couldn't create anything. It was just, bro, it was it's all good. Yeah, there you go, Ghanaian. Okay, then he's the Ghanaian flash. There you go. You know what I'm saying? The Ghanaian, bro, the Ghanaian Asta for Pau. You know what I mean? That's what we've got, bro. You know what I'm saying? The Ghanaian Mo Farah, bro. I don't know. But it is what it is. Um, It is what it is, bro. But. Listen, even though the second half wasn't amazing, even though Zinchenko was a little bit not that good, cool. We did something. I hope ESR, for the sake of us winning the league, which that is all I want, I hope ESR takes something from this performance and he can implement that coming off the bench. Arteta, you can utilise Emo Smith-Rowe to some capacities. Come on. And he looked like he did care today. He looked like he wants to be selected. He looks like he wants to play. He actually looked lively. Was he perfect? No, he wasn't perfect. He scuffed both opportunities that Trossard gave him. He scuffed the opportunity that Odegaard gave him. But he actually looked like he was trying. He looked like he actually gave a crap. Yeah? And that is... Bro, that's all I can That's all I can ask for. Do you know what I'm saying? So, listen. ESR, I think he's the only one out of the rotation bench. Yeah? Out of, the, out of our bench. Players that normally don't are not in the starting lineup. He's the main one that I say, okay, you can use him. Go in the Odegaard oh, drops stinker. Try to use Emil Smith Rowe. You may get a tune out of him. He looks like he's trying to fight for his place. He looks like he wants to do something. You know what I'm saying? He looks like he's trying to do something. You know what I mean? And listen, I was already, I gave up. I'm not going to lie about it. I gave up with ESR. Yeah. But today, if he keeps this up, I don't mind him getting minutes. I don't mind him getting minutes. And we need Odegaard to be made accountable. Because Odegaard was stinky against Man City. So now that Emil Smith-Rowe is step, well, starting to step up or looks like he's starting to step up, utilise that. Utilise it, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? This is a great opportunity now to give Emil Smith-Rowe some more minutes to see if he can, he can compete with Odegaard or he can try to fight to, to get more minutes in the team. Does he, is he going to be in our starting lineup? No, he's not. He's not. When we've got all our players back, it's Jorginho in the midfield. It's going to be Odegaard, Jorginho and Rice. Yeah, we already know that. But there are going to be games where one of them, you know, one of one of them three are going to drop a stinker. We need options. We need options off the bench. We need players that are going to push these starting 11 players on or going to bring something to the team if somebody's not performing. And ESR for me is that. I think Thomas Partey is a bit, is a bit premature to rush him back against the, the stronger teams. Maybe against a bit... Some of the weaker teams, maybe you can do a job. Obviously, he's been out for a long time, so I'd be a bit more cautious about that. But Emil Smith-Rowe has been fit for a while. Give him a couple of chances. I think he deserves it. 
Um, like I said, not speaking much about Raya because Raya didn't really have much to do. You know what I'm saying? Raya didn't really have much to do. So, you know what I mean? It is what it is. Emil Smith Rowe, look, look, I still think that we need better than Emil Smith Rowe, but at the end of the day, we can't buy anyone to the end of the season, can we? So, I'm just going off of what I'm seeing. If I'm seeing a player that looks like they are is performing and, and looks a bit hungry, cool. Give them a bit more opportunity. See if they're hungry. See if they'll take the opportunity again. If Emil Smith Rowe gets 20 minutes against Brighton, yeah, let's say 20 minutes, we need a goal, or Ed Odegaard's dropping a stink on, you put him on. If he doesn't perform, cool, then don't, don't use him anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But um, listen, Hussam, don't even come with this pukaria about our te a masterclass today. Nah, não vem, não vem aqui, filho da puta, que essa pukaria. Não vem. See, you want to turn my match reaction negative. You want to turn me into toxic and negative, yeah? You know what I'm saying? You want to turn me into, into toxic and negative. No, 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 no. It's not a masterclass, yeah? It's a good win. Look at this guy. Look at this, filho da puta. Look at this guy, man. You love it? Look, 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 look. No, 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 I love it. Look at him. This is shameless, bro. Shameless. Yeah. You need to have some shame. Yeah. You keep talking, you keep talking like you're the underdog. Oh, Liverpool don't expect us to win. Oh, it's only poor little Liverpool. Yeah. I want to see that chest. I want to see that chest for Sam. Yeah. I want to see that chest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. A big up, man. Yes, 100 percent Make sure you subscribe to Hassam if you haven't already, man. That's that, you know what I mean? Big up. Um yeah. <laughs> nice to see you back with the mic and a camera instead of Uber driving. Bro, what can we do, man? We've got to make money, bro. We've got to make money. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. Big up to Sam, bro. I don't know how that guy yeah, was actually running a whole channel using his phone, yeah, and using StreamYard. If you've ever used StreamYard on your phone, those foolish stuff, puta. After all the money you pay monthly, you can't even, bro, audio mistakes, Every time the stream lagging, oh bro, it's long, bro. To, to build a channel off of your phone, big up to you, Hussam, bro. I would not have the patience. You know what I'm saying? I would not have the patience. So big up, man. You know what I'm saying? We're underdogs against Sheffield. Get out of here, feel that puta about underdogs against Sheffield. Get out of here, man. This guy, bro. Always trying to play, yeah. The the the, 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 the small dog. You know what I mean? You gotta be one of the big dogs. You're one of the big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Everybody like and subscribe. Come on, man. Big up to you, man. Big up to my guy Hussam, bro. Big up to my guy Hussam. Big up to you. But yeah, like I said, the main thing, I mean, most of the highlights of the game were in the first half. Reese Nelson with a run. Havertz should have released it to Reese Nelson, to be honest with you. Havertz has made a great run. Just needed, if he, if, if Reese Nelson plays the ball, he would have been one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Havertz may score. Do you know what I mean? More than likely, probably would have scored. It's against Luton. Do you know what I'm saying? Reese Nelson needed to release it a lot faster. Odegaard running into the box. Ben White tries to flick it onto him, but fails. Just keep it a little bit more simple, Ben White. Don't need to do all that flashiness. Don't need to do all of that. Um, do you know what I mean? Let's just keep it, you know what I mean? Let's just keep it calm and that. You know what I mean? You didn't really need to do all this flick, flick, fancy stuff. I am going to be putting up the link. I am going to be putting up the link to anyone that wants to jump on. You already know what it is. Mike and camera, and you can jump on and have your say. The link is there in the chat now as i was saying as you guys start coming through um make sure you make sure you have your camera on um trossard passed the esr in the box and he can't control it trossard cross uh to esr and he shoots it straight at the defenders esr wins the ball um then to Havertz, um then a pass to odegaard and he scores one nil listen esr was good in terms of pressing as well he did win the ball for that first goal that was all from esr so let's give him props where props is due let's give him props where props is due um zinchenko leaving the ball for gabriel was completely ridiculous zinchenko inverting and passing it to no one or mispassing the ball was pathetic esr pass uh therese nelson which actually goes off of the defender to make it two nil that was good in the second half, not much really happened. Let's just keep it real. Uh, in the second half, Zinchenko out of position. Gabriel covering for him, as always. Um, Tomiyasu with a shot outside the box that goes wide. Um, other than that, Gabriel with a good block in the box, to be fair. Um, that, was a, that was a pivotal block. Uh, absolutely no one closing him down. Gabriel, that was a great bo block in the box. Uh, Inketia with a shot outside the box that gets saved. And that's really it. Not very eventful, but who gives a crap? We got the three points. Do you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Ultimately, we got the three points. We did the job. And it is what it is. Now, 
people, the link for the show is in the title. Uh, in the title, in the chat. So if you do want to jump on and have your say on the game, you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever. Yeah, links there, camera, mic, and you're able to come on. Gaming for life. We telling me, bro. Big up, bro. Yeah, man. It's a good result for you. You needed that win after the city game. You 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 bounce back from it. Odegaard scored. Simply he did better than he did against the city game. Mm. But like I feel like he he should have done better against City though. Like I don't know why he didn't turn up, but hey, he got he got himself a goal, which is fair enough. Mm. I, I think maybe the manager him. told him something, man, because he didn't yeah, step up. I was up watching two it. games. I was watching the Arsenal and the City on my phone. So I was watching one of my telly, one on the phone. So I was watching both games at times. Mm. Nah, facts, man. Facts. Carl, how you doing, bro? Northside, big up. Hope you well. Big Hope up, you bro. well. Yeah, all good, mate. All good. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a. I found that a frustrating game to watch, but I'll let Gaming for Life have his say on it first before I before I jump in on it. No, nah, like I said, it was a decent result for you lot. You lot bounced back from it. Like Odegaard had a better game. Like I think he's just got to have a constant. Like he's got to have a good game like every time. Like Rice came in. I think you lot were fine when Rice came in because when Rice comes in, he does his job for you lot. I don't think there's a problem when Rice comes on. Yeah, uh, I pros- I personally, when I s- my original prediction was going to be a four was a four nil. I thought we'd slap them up easy peasy, get job done, get some of the bigger guys off at half time, game manager in the second half, and then we move on to Brighton on Saturday. As soon as I saw that lineup and I saw Nick Carter at left back, I'm like, oh for. F- Sick. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was as I oh, this is not good. This is really affecting me. Smith Row, look, Emil Smith Row, he's been battling injury for what look for what seems like an eternity at this football club. The fact he finally got a chance to establish what he can actually do, it was good to see. He need he need he needs the game time. The problem is though, we're just scared. He just reminds me of Jack Wilshere, the potential of Jack Wilshere, but consistently injured all the time. And if you just get rid of the injuries, you, you've got a, a quite a de- half decent player on your hands there. But because he's injured all the time, he just falls down the pecking order. Reese Nelson, this was his audition to say, right, okay, Saka's not playing today. He ain't even on the bench. This is all on you now, mate. You got that right side is your domain. That is your ball club. And if you don't, de- and if you don't put in a performance, you're gone, and you're gone in the summer. And that performance was all that you needed to know about why Mikel Arteta continuously plays Saka every single game because the backup option is just no point. It's just no good. Um, but it was just a fresh- it was- Rice, man. Come on, man. I've had this on. <laughs> you look like Declan Rice. Now that you said it, no, no. you do look like Declan Rice. <laughs> I had this on Jimmy Stream, man. I love it. I love if I look it. like Van Dyke, you look like Declan Rice. Bro, I've had. I can't Declan lie, bro. I can't, I can't lie, Carl. You look a bit like Jorginho. I can't lie. <laughs> I'm saying, bro, are you, are you calling me handsome? Like Thank Rice. you very much. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, Jorginho's not a bad looking guy. No homo. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Declan Rice, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Don't know what to say to that. Anyway, anyway, uh, back on topic. Look, it was a frustrating game to watch That's because sick. I wanted this to be a, just a straightforward beat down and then get and then win four or five nil. But it wasn't that sort of game. And there's a reason being why Luton Town they are they're really the only team in the relegation zone that actually give a shit and they are actually trying to fight their way out. They're really the only team. They, from start to finish, they did not stop. They continued to come at us. They didn't really affect us in any way, but they were trying to force the issue on us. They did it from start to finish, right up to the 94th minute. So, but at the end of the day, we, we game managed it well. Two good, two very good goals. The problem I have with Odegaard is probably the same thing with you, Northside. It was basically, when he has an opportunity to shoot, he passes. When he actually has a chance to you know, kill it, kill the, pull the trigger. He just either whiffs it completely or he ends up passing it off. He is the captain. I believe he's just trying to be very unselfish, like just trying to assist all the time. Sometimes in these sorts of moments, you need to have that selfishness. And I think once he does have that, he he can be, a, he's one of our killer finishers in that midfield. But 
we don't see it on a regular basis. We don't see it on a consistent basis. I want to see that more out of Odegaard. If you have a chance to shoot, just take the bloody shot. That's all we're asking you to do. We know you can create. We know you can assist. Mm. But we're also, that if you can have that final piece of your game on a consistent basis, Jesus Christ, this player will be will be will be a lot better in in future in future years to come. But it was good to see Thomas Parsi play. Um, I thought he still doesn't look match fit to me, but he did. He was more cleaner compared to what he was in the previous game. I thought it was a lot more clean. He cleaned up all the mess that needed to be done. Um, and yeah, once again, the defense. You can't say a lot more with the center us because they've just been absolutely elite. Um, pretty much, pretty much from, for most of the season, Saliba has started to be. I always look at the two center halves as Gabriel's being that that ruthless bully on the striker, and then Saliba is just mopping up the final ball. He were took it, taking it back to David Raya or knocking it right to Ben White. Um, he's always the person that mops it up. So professional performance, frustrating because we didn't really see an absolute beatdown, but in terms of how the title races, it's three points, two down, eight to go. We move on to Brighton Saturday night. Mm. Yeah, I, was, I mean, yeah, go on. No, go on, no, no, sorry. No, go on, go on. I go was going to ask you because I've been on other streams on like flawlesses and that, and people have been questioning, saying, is Declan Rice really 100 mil? And flawlesses, and people are saying, is he worth that money? So I wanted to ask you both, is he worth 100 million? To me, person, uh, to me personally, I think yes. I think he's put right. in more. He's put in more solid, and even some very, very good man on the match performances that want that kind of warrants it in a way. When you pay a hundred million pound for a player, you need to know exactly what you are getting. And because we've seen Declan Rice play at West Ham, we know what he is. He's a holding yeah. defensive midfielder. He can play as a six. He can play as a left side eight. If you want him to be in more advanced role. <laughs> Um, but he just seems to read the game so well. He breaks through the lines very well. And I just kind of, and he is, he is, I always think he is the captain by def, by default because I think Odegaard has done well, but you could just see Declan Rice, how he commands the midfield more. And I think that's what also makes him captain material. I think that's, that's probably what doesn't get added on. It's the fact he is not a captain. If he was captain material on 100 million, you'd probably say, yeah, I accept that. But because mm. he ain't, and the fact what he is doing without the captain's armband, um, it's, it's, it's phenomenal in my eyes. This is why, on, I think on that side, there's a picture of Declan Rice on my green screen. Because that guy has been absolutely, he's been mustered. He's been mustered when, for us. When you guys signed him, was you like both kind of like happy? Like you got him or was you like worried? No, I was I was buzzing. I was I wanted him and Cancedo or Caicedo, but we was only oh, wow. but according but according to one of our one of um, on a group chat that I'm on, um, someone who's inside of the Arsenal, basically they said they're only going to get one or neither, and they what ended up going Declan Rice. Do you think Madison would have been a good fit for you, lot, or would have been meh? No, I'm I, think, I wanted Madison, man. I wanted yeah, Madison. I, you know what I'm saying? No, I want I wanted Madison too. I wanted, I wanted him Madison, too. Uh, if you see the way he's it... performed, like the whole season, you see the way he performed at Spurs. Imagine how he would have performed in this team. And listen, he would have been on day, I want bro, two he players been of quality. I want two players of quality, bro. We mm. listen, we we load up the fact that we've got Partey and Rice. Two players of quality. We load that. So you guys have been after Kaiser as well, then. So it was you, Liverpool, and then Aston as well. Yeah, we're looking at we're looking at Caicedo, yeah. Because I know him. before we offered him the 115, Liverpool offered him 100, but Caicedo was just there like, nah, I'm sorry, I've already made my deal with Chelsea. If thing is, I I don't know why we offered him that much money, but you know, I don't care. But that, that's the thing, like I think I, I agree with you, Carl. I think um, Declan Rice has been worth it, bro. Like I don't think not only just defensively that he's solid. You know, he's offered a couple of goals as well. The the, the main goal that always stands out is always the. Luton because that was the match winner. You know what I'm saying? That mm. was an important win. A game that, you know, we now looking back at it, it's like, how did we allow these guys to score three goals? But today was a lot more controlled. I think, and the effect, man, that the fact is, yeah, when you get a player that gives you eight, nines, 10 out of 10 performances, week in, week out, they're worth every penny. 
You know what I mean? Absolutely. I, I don't think you can really like complain with, with the price tag. Is he worth it? I mean, is any player worth 100 mil? But at the end of the day, this market's crazy. It is what it is, yeah. isn't it? It is what it is. So, yeah, man, I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think um, this guy saying, bro, what's the point of mentioning him when you know he's only played uh, to rest players? Well, that's the problem. What if your main player that is only only here to rest is injured? Now you've got to rely on him. You know what I mean? Like, what are we talking about here? You know, look how many injuries Chelsea's had and they've had to rely on other players that wouldn't have made their start in 11. And it hasn't been good enough. Those things happen, bro. Do the you only person we had to rely on is Cole Palmer. And that's it. Because he's the only one who can do shit. Hmm. And our main problem has been was like midfielders and centre backs. I mean, so, Ster- I mean, I mean, Sterling comes on every now and then to help you out, but it seems like the fan base is turning on Sterling as well as I, everybody well, else. I, I'm not surprised. I would rather start Mudrick than f- him. And you know what it is? You know, Mudrick hasn't started that much for Chelsea, yeah. But people have saying that he's had more goals, tackles, and everything than uh, than Rashford. And it's even on the. I saw it on Twitter as well. I was like, no way. Mm. AK, what do you make of this game, bro? And, and we'll touch on City's game, but what do you make of Arsenal's game? Did you watch it? Uh, yeah, I mean, nothing to watch despite... Uh, I mean, Luton weren't that impressive in my eyes, but Arsenal, yeah, they managed to keep a clean sheet. Mm. 2-0. They managed to keep a clean sheet. Mm. And they played with ease. Is that it? <laughs> AK always stops like he's got more to say and then doesn't say more. But listen, now nah, listen, fair enough. I think just today is just I, I think only ESR for me do I do I think is the only player that deserves more game time. Thomas Partey. Uh, I still don't really want to risk him in, in the harder games. We've got tough games coming up. I know we've got Brighton, but Brighton are no mugs. Yeah, look, Brighton didn't make it look easy for Liverpool. I, I think no, Brighton really dominated in the first half. If they had an actual proper striker, they would have won that game, bro. Because in the first half, Brighton against Liverpool, they had enough chances to be 3-0 up, bro. Like, they were absolutely cooking Liverpool. And they had no... They, they, the way they paid... They played through that high press of Liverpool as well with ease in that first half. They died off in the second half, but Brighton, they're not they're not an easy team, bro. And they, they, they look like they're going for it. And they went toe-to-toe with, with Liverpool. Yeah, they didn't win, but they gave them a game. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think that game's going to be a bit too fast for Partey. The way they're midfielders and the way they'll transition in the ball, I don't think, I agree with you, Carl. I think Partey looked a lot better this game, but I wouldn't say he's completely up to speed. And I don't think a game like Brighton we need to get back, you know, we need Rice back in the team. But I do want to give credit to Mikel Arteta. I wanted rotation. I wanted Saka to rest. We keep hearing all these these things about Saka's getting injured, this and that, knocks and that. The right thing to do was to rest Saka today. Yeah, we need him for Bayern. We need him going up against Aston Villa. We need him for Brighton. We need him, you know, for the North London derby. There's big, big games that are going to need Saka. Well done, Mikel Arteta. I get on to this manager a lot, but when he does things right, I'll give him props. Yeah, but not like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry to stop you there. But uh, today's Villa game, I mean, Villa were, uh, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, like, Villa actually just like Villa actually uh, having a lot of injury. I mean, Villa actually have injuries, and I'm not gonna lie, after that first goal they netted, they didn't even put up a fight. Mm. I was just surprised. We easily coached with four goals. We dunked four goals on them today. I, I didn't I didn't wa- I didn't watch your game, but I see that you guys dropped Haaland. Um to be fair, funny enough, I can't remember whose stream it was. I've been doing too it many streams. Andy. Someone streamed Andy. I said you guys need to drop Haaland. And you drop Haaland and it looked like your players played a lot better. Grealish on the left, Doku on the right. Do you think Doku's more suited for, for playing on the right? Foden turning up as well. That guy's been, he, he stepped up, man. I've been saying this. When people are talking, talking to me about the argument between Saka and Foden, Foden's been coming clutch for you guys this season, man. And he, he's really stepping up. What do you make yeah, of Foden? But, but Saka's still better because he gets in the squad. Foden doesn't that much. So The thing is, though, Saka has been learning to do this all on his own. Phil Foden yeah. has had Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Fernandinho, Rodri. 
you know, I could go on and on of Manchester City, how the, how the, the abundance of riches that they have got. But that's what you have quality and experience and eliteness in that in that team. And when it rubs off on the on the on the on the younger players, especially like the youth setup, because Phil Foden come up from the youth setup for Man City. When you're learning to play with those sorts of quality players on a day and day in and day out basis, it rubs off on you. Phil Foden has now got that. Um, we we as in, we as English fans, okay, as England fans, right? We are now, we didn't have that sort of talent. We had the golden age, but we didn't really have that sort of abundance talent. You look at the talent we got now, Saka, Foden, Madison. They can all make something happen. They can all create. They can all be technically, they're all technically gifted. So that's, a, that's amazing. That's, that's to the setup and the production and the development of what Manchester City have done for Phil Foden. Whereas Bakayo Saka is coming through the Arsenal ranks and just pretty much carried this team on his back. Mm. No, but I hear that. I hear that. I'm not, I'm not talking about the argument between them because, listen, I got my preference and my preference in terms of ability, I still put Foden, but Saka's the the, the, the player that's had more game time, the, the, the player that plays week in, week out. He's more dependent upon in his team. We're talking about this season. When mm. they've needed him, Foden more times than not has turned up. Yeah, and he hasn't got Gundo there to hold his hand. KDB was injured. He's been stepping up and you still need to have the ability. I agree with you that when you're around top players, of course, you're going to get better. But we have, there was, we've seen excellent Man United teams. Yeah. And it's not like all of a sudden, some of their players still were average. Some players are still average in that Man United team, even though they're around great, a great Man United team. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when you yeah. look at Wes Brown, he still wasn't the level of the other defenders that they had. You know what I'm saying? Or, or Anderson wasn't of the level of the rest of the players. Yeah, they were around great players, but that doesn't make you automatically a great player because you're in a team full of winners. So I'm talking about Foden's ability. He still has to have the ability to be clutch and, and deliver for them when they need him to. And I think this season, the more responsibility given to Foden, he's rising to the occasion. Yeah, OK, cool. He didn't turn up against Arsenal. Fair enough. Well, neither did Saka. Neither did Saka. Neither did Saka. So. Neither did Saka. So it's one of them ones. But I think, bro, I, I can't lie, man. I can't lie. Like, bro, the guys, the guys stepped up, man. The guys stepped up. And and listen, I, I listen. I hope. I, I don't need him to step up. I don't need him to step up, bro. <laughs> I don't need him to step up because, bro, when you guys conceded, I thought, yes, that's it. Come on, like deep down, I was praying, like, yo, these guys are gonna drop points, and then. This guy turns up. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I have a question for AK. Now, do you City fans regret selling Cole Palmer and not giving him a chance at City? Because a lot of City fans are crying and calling Pep stupid because you couldn't replace Mares. Eh, that's very controversial. I, I don't know how to start this. I don't know how to answer that one, but... You, if you personally ask me, yeah, I do regret selling Cole Palmer. I mean, I, I do regret uh, letting Cole Palmer leave. I do, I do regret it. But it is what it is. I mean, we can't do anything. We had to we had to move on. Now, at the moment, yeah, Foden is doing... Yeah, at the moment, Pep. Foden's uh, doing a better job first. Hmm. What do you think, Northside? Do you think... Pep was a bit dumb selling him because he initially wanted him to start for Mara's, like when Mara's left. Yeah, he, like, yeah. Uh, he rectify it though, man. He rectify it. He's not the type of player. If it doesn't work, he'll go yeah. out there into the market and get a player that will that will make it work. I think he's yeah. going to rectify this, man. This manager's shown us in what eight, well, nine years has he been here now? You know what I'm saying? Nine, nine years. Nine years that he's been here, that he he'll rectify it, bro. He's got no favorites, you know what I mean. And mm. he did it when he first came to Man City, getting rid of Joe Hart, you know what I mean. Then getting rid of Bravo. If it don't work, he'll change it. Yeah, he don't have no favorites, you know what I'm saying. Like, uh, do you know what? I I still don't know into this day how we managed to pull him off. I don't know. I mean, he's just been balling for us. Yeah, man. Just yeah, Cole Palmer's been balling, balling for you, lot. Cole Palmer's been balling for you. Yeah, and apparently we might extend his uh, contract. Uh, his wages up. He could go to up to 150k a week. Apparently, That's well deserved. I, I would say he deserves it. Well deserved. Yeah, he deserves it. Sterling doesn't yeah, he deserve deserves it. He deserves to be on 350k, not like Sterling who just sits down 350k. Uh, not Sterling. Not Sterling. 
Not Sterling. Sterling doesn't deserve nothing. That's the reason we sold him. That's the reason we sold him. He was trash. Not for your club, no. He wasn't that trash. He did. He did I mean, like after the after the twenty twenty one final, after twenty after the, uh, after the twenty twenty one final, uh, he dropped. He, he dropped stinkers after that. So hmm. we just gave him away. You, the problem the problem with Sterling, yeah, is you need a, you need a system, yeah, that is working and is functional, and you've got other players that you rely on to be your main goal scorer, because. This guy is not a leader, bro. He's somebody, if you give him high volume of chances, he may score, but this guy is not going to score week in, week out. And the thing is, no. the whole setup at Chelsea was wrong for him. You don't, know your, you don't know your strongest system. You don't know your strongest lineup. You don't know where you're playing your best players. You're relying too much on him because you don't have a proven striker. Luckily, Palmer's at least delivering. But then you've got a midfield that's not, the, that's not doing anything. You've got Gallagher that's just running around like a flipping horse. You've got Enzo. Oh, that's get him out of my game. club. Caicedo looks lost, so it's like, bro, there's no structure around Sterling. He won't, he won't. If it's Caicedo like and Enzo playing together, yeah, they play fine without Gallagher. But when it's Gallagher, bro, <laughs> this guy's <laughs> running like he's begging for milk. But listen, we got Riz that's joined. Pick up Riz, bro. What are you got to yeah. say? Bless up, bless up to the man them for the panel. Bless up, man. Bless up. Yeah, man. So, yeah, I like that we beat Luton today. Some mm. people are expecting 4-0, 5-0, 6-0. It would have been nice if we got that, but at the end of the day, what's most important is we got the job. Oh, his Wi-Fi is moving. Oh, he's back. Can I'm back. Know? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Okay, yeah. So as I was saying, like, some people are predicting 5 nils, 4 nils, and those 6 nils, but... It would have been nice to got those, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is we got the job done. Mm. Because, yeah, now we are, like, on top of the league, but now it means, you know... What the hell? He's bugging out. Yeah. Try, try coming out, Riz, and, and, and jumping back I in. don't know. All right, cool. AK, we got we got a couple of people um, waiting. So AK and Gaming for Life, I'll chat to you guys soon, yeah? Yeah. Love yeah. jumping on, guys, yeah? Appreciate love. it. Love, bro. Love, 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 love. Francisco. How are you doing, Northside? All good? Carl? I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay, Gunner, so. what are you saying? Good to be saying, bro. What are saying? Hey. What's oh. He's gone. What's that? What's that beep? Yeah, that's from you, Francisco, man. Every single time. Rizzy, yeah, what were you saying, bro? Yeah, bro. Oh, sorry about that, man. I don't know what. No, no, it's calm, bro. Bless. All um, right. So I was saying the most important thing is that we got the job done. And I see people trying to run this narrative now, like saying, oh, we didn't play good or the game was trying to run this boring narrative. At the end of the day, we got the job done, and I'm glad that Smith will got some well-deserved minutes. I I just want to see him start scoring again, because that kid, he can score. Mm. And right now, for me right now, the, the three most important games that we have to play right now to secure this league, this Brighton game, that's a must-win. We got to beat Spurs, and we got to dealt with Villa. Just as old City went there and dealt with them, they lost to them 1-0. We lost to them 1-0. We got to rectify that. Mm. So those games are the games that I'm looking at. Every game is important, but those games... I'm not looking at money because by, by the time we get there, the league could be all wrapped up. Who knows? Because that's the second to last game of the season. So we can't be looking at that. We got to look at the games that are the, the, that are more in front of us right now. Those are the, the must-win games. Mm. No, facts. Yes. Facts. Man. Facts. I don't see anything wrong with what, what, what you just said there. Uh, Francisco, your, your mic is making a bit of a sound, but try it. What are you saying, bro? You good? All good. All good. A bit of a noise. I don't know if it's a TV or something. I no, know. I don't have TV. 
Okay, he's go on, go on, really... go on. No, have to say, don't worry, Francisco. Bye, bye, bye. Okay, it was like good performance. First half, we we killed the game. Uh, second half, no much to be said. No much to be said because we got the chopped on. It's simple as that. I was expecting like a banana skin a three two because Luton usually usually is crap defensively, but they can score goals. But you know good job for Arsenal to keep the clean sheet and get the win okay now adds up to the, the next couple of fixtures that going to be very difficult one of them is against Brighton mm. Do, this, so, does this game give you more confidence going into the Brighton game yeah we show that we are a little mm. more cohesive okay in a sweet role we get we make some the rotation to the team but okay you know positivity is nice but with moderation just like alcohol <laughs> hmm. yeah no i hear that i hear that we're going to obviously be putting a, a stronger line i'm expecting to see a stronger lineup going into brighton but um yeah man it is what it is man i think um Reese Nelson and Zinchenko's days at Arsenal, they're numbered. I think I think they're done to where we're trying to get to. Um the only positives in terms of rotation is um, nah, that is that is Francisco, I don't know what's going on with that. But um yeah, I think um only Smith Rowe and Partey do I feel like deserve some minutes um in the upcoming games. But um yeah, man, I, I hear that. I hear that. It's Ah, uh, it, it's it's a tough one, man. It's a tough one because all we I, have to do. Don't get too excited. No, go on, go on, Rizzi. Yeah, all we have to do, come Brighton. We have to take our chances. You see, we can't go there, and if we're gonna go there and park the bus again, I have no problem doing that. But we gotta take our chances. That Jesus guy gets on my nerves. He was fucking dribbling <laughs> when he should pass the ball. He's taking too much out of it. Hugging the ball, and when it comes down to it, he's not taking his chances. Mm. And if he gets the opportunity to start again or come on, he got to take his chance. Mm. Because back in 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 Christmas, if he take his chance against West Ham, we 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 would have got something out of that game. Mm. Probably won it. Mm. I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. Before we wrap up, let's go to Zay Talks. I think it's your first time on the channel. Big up, bro. Yeah, what it you is, man. Bro? Uh, now, first of all, I'm spectating as like a rival because we play next Tuesday. I'm a Bayern fan, by the way. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but here, yeah. So I was watching only the I'd say the last ten minutes of the game. Yeah. Because I was heading back from like my gathering at my grandma's, and. I'll be honest, yeah, I was pretty taken back from the players you were playing against Luton. You played like the likes of Zinchenko, Smith Rowe. I'm guessing you're trying to rest players before Brighton, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then you want to prepare for us. Mm. Listen, I'll tell you guys this. I said it yesterday, I was in a call in show on DR Sports, yeah. And I'd say, I was warning these Arsenal fans. Listen, I'm just going to put it to you guys like this. I think some Arsenal fans need to be very careful with how they look at us and how they look at themselves. Because at the end of the day, right, yes, we're not doing good this season. I can admit that Thomas Tuchel has sent us down to the graveyard. But at the same time, it's one of those things where you guys lack experience. So I don't know how you're going to cope with that. You know what I'm saying? What do you guys think? But let me ask you something. Are you confident in your back line? If we confident? start Dyer, like we have no, <laughs> no. Are you confident with Dyer? <laughs> no, but I will tell you also this: Am I confident that you guys won't score enough because of our backline messing up? No, I'm not. I'm confident you won't score. Basically, well, we'll see. You're confident that you're not. You're not going to score. Let, when I was no, 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 no. Let me, let me twist my, let me change it because I'm phrasing it wrong. What I'm trying to tell you. I am not confident that an Arsenal's attack to score from our mistakes. 
So are you, are you happy with your defence? Because a lot of your defenders no. individually have been making a lot of mistakes, been very um, up and down. Even when you've played Kimmich there, some games he's been good, some games he's been poor. 100%. 100%. Upper Mokono has, been, has been quite poor as well, which is why you guys are playing Dyer, isn't it? Some games you're, you've played no, no, Dyer. No, no, no. Tuka just has a fetish for Eric Dyer. No matter who it is. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> You guys need to understand, yeah. So we missed out on Dragusin, I believe his name is, right? Yeah. And Thomas Tuchel was like, you know what? Dyer is the best option for us. So obviously our chairman, our I mean Dreesen is a yes man, so of course he agrees with Thomas Tuchel. And that's when we go get, you know, what's his name? Dyer. And since then, he's been starting over Opamikano, Kim Min J, Delic. He has to be in the starting 11 next to either of these center backs. And it makes no sense to me to this day how that's possible. I don't get it. Spurs wanted to get rid of him. And we bring him in and with open arms, make this guy's dream come true. And all of a sudden, now he's starting. And then, you know, our last game against Dortmund. Uh, who, who here watched the game against Dortmund? Uh, by yeah, I, I, I did. I didn't was, catch. Was so, not, um, wasn't impressed yeah. with what I saw. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'll tell you something, yeah. That def that defending for the goal that Adiemi scored, oh my god, man! The lick was left on his own. I absolutely lost it. Like I feel bad for the lick because I actually genuinely think that the licks are like best defender, personally, right? And for some reason, at the start of the season, the lick wasn't like fit at all. Fair enough, but as he got better, like recovering and everything, you'd think that he'd start, but no, he hasn't, and. I don't know, Tuchel could just rather play as Dyer since January and beforehand he'd play Apomikano, Kim Min Jae. And we know Apomikano, yes, he can be good, but he's also a liability when it matters most. But let me so, ask you, let me ask you this, my G. Go ahead, I'm man. You say you don't think we'll score against your mistakes. But yes. what I've seen of you guys with the game in the game in particular with Man United in the Champions League. The chances that they got, you made those mistakes against us. I'm sure we'll score. I'm, I'm, I don't know. You know, I said I don't know because I've seen your games as well. And I will tell you this. It's one of them ones where I'll give you an example. The Gabriel Jesus versus Manchester City. Yeah, that you was know, I, yeah. You know, I think you guys need to start against us. Like, I think one of this player for you guys, he definitely needs to start against us. I think you need to start, uh, or attack. He needs to start Chossard. All I'm saying is, if you defend like that against Arsenal, I do believe that we'll score goals against you, bro. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Do you know what I mean? So, I think, I think I think you need to I think you need to be you need to be careful, bro. North side, North yeah. Side. Yeah, but I think Arsenal fan needs to be careful too. But North side, go both ways. Yeah. North side, they're saying. Well, they're saying that we, we, we don't have experience. Yeah, we don't have experience. But if you're going to come there and not and think we're just going to get roll over at the Emirates, well, you have another thing coming. If no, no I, but can I tell you something? I don't think we're going to beat you in the Emirates, right? I'll be the <clears throat> first part to admit that. I think we're going to give away so many attacks. You're probably going to win 2-1, I'd say, right? My issue is, are you going to do the job at the Allianz Arena if you don't do the enough job in the Emirates? That's my question. If you don't do Different enough... Kind of the Emirates, Different kind of kind of of but quickly, before we wrap up, go on for this issue. Okay, I was about to say that Bayern... Okay, we talk about Bayern. Attacking-wise, it is... Okay, you have good players. But this season... Your defense is capitulating like a house of cards. Midfield as well. I'll midfield yeah. as well. I, wanna add, I think our midfield's worse. Yeah. Especially the midfield is not being the, their strongest. Goretzka no, is in bad it's form. Worse. Goretzka is yeah. bad form. You have to rely on Eric Dye or either Eric Dyer or even Upamecano. Okay, the fresh Titus Titus Bramble. Okay, to do pairing with the Ligt. Bro, you have two liabilities, and what happened to Kim? That's what I was gonna say. I am. I've been advocating all season for Delict and Kim and Jade start next to each other, and I do not know why this donkey Tuchel does not do that. I don't know why he doesn't do that. Generally, I don't get it. 
Because if it was, see, here's the thing with Tuchel, yeah. Northside, you said you've watched a bit of us. You said, and you keep that saying. So I want to ask you a question, right? Do you notice that sometimes we don't even have a pattern of play? Yeah, you look. Like, you guys look all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have no idea what this tactic is going forward. You think that it's like pass, pay. The, That's pass, why I think it's a hard ball. game to call. That's why I think it's a hard game to call. I understand that you got heritage, but at the moment we're playing better. If you implement yeah, yeah, yeah. the style of football that that Porto played, yeah, against us, I can see you guys going through because you got a better attack. And Harry Kane mm -hmm. likes to turn up against Arsenal. But at the same time, if you open up against us, that is where we are dangerous. Even when we played Man City, I'm going to keep it real. Even Pep was cautious to not bombard all his players forward because he knows that we, we do have players that, that can hurt you on the attack. Yeah, so listen, I know that we're not European giants. I know that we don't have the experience. But if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with us, I actually expect our chances a lot higher. Do I think that 100% we're going to beat you? No. But I think that you guys are so disorganized and your manager doesn't know how to put out the best lineup and the best system. And there's so many individual mistakes in your defense that we can get, you can get got at. And we've got a lot of attacking players that are in form. That's why I say your best bet is to sit back and try and hit us on the counter. That is your best bet. I don't think I you should open up. I hope he does that. You know what I'm saying? So, I hope because, yeah, it's, you know, the thing is with Tuchel, yeah? It's one thing taking over a job at Chelsea and having a defensive mindset. It's another thing taking mm. a job at Bayern with an attacking mindset. So it's hard for me to call what Tuchel is going to do at the Emirates. It's not just really the fact. It's not just the fact. Defensively, you have like issues with the center partnership. I saw the game Bayern had against Borussia Dortmund. Alfonso Davies throw a stinker. Oh, yeah, the second goal is on him. The second yeah. goal, the Ryerson goal. Yeah, yeah. He, he was not yeah. marking that. Uh, but you know what? I think with Davies, part of the issue is because is he's had his like, already thinking about Madrid. Yeah. He's, and to be honest, I, I think he should be giving us some clarification what he wants to do because at this rate, he's just stalling us and it's pissing like most Bayern fans off. Yeah. I kind of give me a feeling that maybe Tucho is doing an inside shot for Dortmund in Bayern. <laughs> in you know, uh, so I basically do. Uh, so basically, I'm a part of the Bayern view at, at times, and like my colleague tells me the same thing as you just did. Like he's doing an inside job <laughs> oh, every day. Hopefully, hopefully, he can do an inside job when we face him. You know what I mean? Hopefully, he can do an inside job then. But listen, people, like and subscribe, hit the bell notification. Big up to everyone for jumping on. Sorry for everyone that I can't get on. But it is almost hitting midnight and I do have to work. So, yeah, man, big up to everyone. Um, and, yeah, listen, three points, we take it. Uh, not the best performance overall, but it was a professional performance. We get we get the three points and we move. And, um, yeah, man, uh, Zir, um, feel free to jump on when Arsenal face um, when Arsenal face Bayern Munich and we can have that discussion then. Um, but, yeah, man, it is what it is. I think um, it's a bit early, but, yeah. It is what it is, man. Hopefully, Arsenal get, get the job done. And um, people, make sure you smash the likes and subscribe. Or without further ado, we're out, caramba. <laughs>